All right, so we're pulling up to Herb Time's place. I haven't been here in a minute. He upgraded his place. Now it's two stories, a bunch of new stuff, and I'm so excited, man. <laughs> How's it going, man? I think you would show up. Jeez, man. I know. Just I came to the right place. Good place. Two stories. I haven't been here before. Like, I'm excited, man. I've been seeing your Instagram. I'm excited too. It's a lot more stuff going on. A lot more headache, but it's worth it. So down here is not really done. This is going to be more displays. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. We'll just go straight up. And Let's see all the animals here. instead of yeah. all the construction, man. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go. So how you liking it here, bro? I know you're barely getting settled in. So how long have you been doing this in this place? This place, I've been here... Well, I was at a smaller place just down the street for like three months, and mm -hmm. I've been here like two now. Oh, man. So at the smaller place, I thought it was enough. It was 1,400 square feet, but it wasn't. So now I'm in 3,000. 3,000? Dude. And I definitely have room to grow, so... Oh, man. This is kind of my quarantine room. Like, I do a lot of stuff with breeders, other breeders of other reptiles, so this is where I'll kind of keep stuff that I just get in to make sure it doesn't affect anything else. Okay, makes sense. And also where I prepare food and I have medication for wild caught stuff. Yeah. Woo! I'm excited for that. Look and at that. This is my... Oh, man. Here is an annoyance. Dude. About every cage has a different species. There's only a few Ooh, repeats wow. that people really like. Dude, so. all four sides of this room filled with tanks. So you're living my dream, dude. This is the adults, and then we can go right where we passed. And these are my babies, eggs, and some some holdbacks and uh, smaller species in here. Oh, dude, you're killing it, man. Look yeah. at all these babies. And did you just start this new uh, enclosure for the babies? Yeah, or? so I was putting the multiples in here, but uh -huh. when I'm trying, I have some species that no one else really has. I'm trying to kind of line breed them to just make really pretty forms of them. So this is kind of the best way I found to keep track of who the parents were, keep them separate so they don't hurt each other because sometimes they'll nip tails or right, right. compete for food or get bullied depending on size. So. All right, dude, what do we have here? So this is the Allison's Anol, Anolus Allisoni. Uh, he's still young, so he still has a lot of blue to gain, but you can see his head's blue, and he can get blue all the way down to here. It's starting to come in. He still needs to get some, but they are like the green Anol, but they're from Cuba, and they get much bigger. He'll still get a lot beefier, and that head gets huge on these, so they're a very cool species. A lot of people like them. This guy will look like that, in about a year or two more. He's Jeez. barely a year old. So you can see the blue coming in on the sides, but yeah, they're an insane lizard. There's actually a wild population in Florida. Anolis vermiculatus, the Cuban stream anole. And he's about full grown. They're a big species. Wow, yeah, he's huge. And they're very aquatic. I don't have them in paludariums right now, mm -hmm. but they'll literally dive in water, stay underwater for an hour, catch fish out of the water. Dude, it looks like a straight out dinosaur. Yeah. Look at that. And it kind of reminds me of a little like crocodile. They have a little scream when they're upset. And you can see he's big. He's probably like close to 18 inches. Yeah. So not a small anole by any means. Cuba has some of the coolest anoles. This is Anolus petersii, um, the Peters anole. And this is a very large female. They are from mainland, like the mainland of North America and Central America, like Mexico. And uh, they have such cool personality. She's way fired down like i said but they have really cool color when they're fired up i have the only known captive bred and born male that will hopefully be breeding them soon i have two females yeah, and it's very rare to catch males because the females live in the lower areas of the rainforest mm -hmm. and the males live in the very tops like hundreds of feet up so whenever they're caught it's very rare to ha get a male in so yeah. they're usually i mean a normal anole wouldn't be hanging out on me like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fact. They're, oh, there it is. So this is Anola Sparchai, the Cuban cliff anole. And usually he's fired down right now because he's upset I grabbed him. But his tail's super bright blue. His feet are super bright blue. He has a blue spot right by his ear. And they have really cool striping. What do you think, Edwin? Dude, can I have one? Yeah. <laughs> Just give me a different sonar. Oh, okay. This is an Anolis Roquette Roquette. Uh, its locality is Choice Alets, and Roquette is an extremely variable species. There are six subspecies, and then each locality, like a few mile difference, just looks totally different. Even the ones living within a few hundred feet look totally different. 
This guy's not happy, so we'll put him back, but we'll grab another Roquette out. Let's just show you the difference. So remember how this guy looks. So this is also a Roquette Roquette from Choice of Let's, but he's firing down already a little bit. He has a lot more blue, a lot more spots than the last one. He is just an insane lizard. They're both beautiful in their own way, but personally, I prefer this. The high yellows, high blues, uh, this lighting isn't great to see, but look at his belly. So you bright. can imagine this coloration is usually what's along his body. So he's fired down a lot because he's upset that I pulled him out from his uh, girlfriend. So this is also a Roquette, but it's its own subspecies, Selenai. And uh, you can see usually when they're fired up, they're a bright, like almost lime green. And they, they have these crazy black saddles. They are just one really cool species of Roquette. And it's one of the six subspecies. I think I have six of the subspecies, or five of the six, sorry. So there's the Roquette Roquette, Roquette Summus. I can pull out, this is Roquette Selenai, Roquette Zebrelius, Roquette Malgergoris, I'm not gonna say it's French. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more Roquette subspecies I don't have, but I have five of the, five of the six. That was my favorite so far. I love the black spots on this Well, back. let me show you the Roquette Zebrelius, which is similar. So this is Roquette Zebrelius, and he's not totally fired up, and he's still a young one. I raised this guy from a baby, but you can start to see, just like the Selenai, he has those black saddles, but instead of the green, he is white underneath. You can kind of see on his belly, but yeah. you see the white coming in as he fires up, and the uh, brownish black saddles on him. This is Roquette, I'm butchering the name, Magil, <laughs> Magil, Magil Gris, Magil Gris, I don't know. But they have this kind of more olive-ish green body, and then they have like a whitish pied head. So you can see his head, and on some of them, their head is totally white and will go all the way down to here. This guy is developing some more as he ages of the white, but... It's a super cool system. And Roquette all oh, generally have yeah. the yellow dewlaps. Guys, imagine I had a room like this full of collards. Oh, oh man, this would be my dream, dude. It would, just, it would just be a rainbow full of different colors, man. Hey, do you do it? maybe one day, man. One day, this stuff, I mean, I'm sure it's not cheap, man. No, but it's <laughs> worth it. So there's Roquette Summits. Mm. And they, let's see if he's out. Nope. They have really bright yellow spots, the Roquette Summits. This is the locality of Roquette Summits called Macuba, and they have a black head. Oh, look at that. And he has a blue and green body. He's fired down already, but look at that thing. Oh man, look at yeah. this, dude. What a beauty. Totally black head. Some of these Macuba will have these yellow spots going all the way down. And uh, when he's fired up, he's blue here and then green here, so. Okay, now I want this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're cool. And the dual laps are just crazy. Oh man. So this is the Jamaican twig anole, Anolus valencini. And I personally think they are one of the coolest anoles as a pet um, because they act just like a false chameleon usually. They're very mellow, very tame. They have the same behavior as a false chameleon. Um, they can move their eyes independently also. And they stay a lot smaller. This is a full grown male. And when he's fired up, he'll have yellow. His uh, tail will be gray and yellow and they're just super cool to me. They just kind of hang out on twigs all day, mm -hmm. like wrapped around tiny twigs. And- uh, Is that why they're called twiggles? <laughs> that's why they're called twiggles. What causes them to do that? This is dewlap? It, is, it like a, is it like a calling to breed or something? Yeah, or? so this will be, they'll use this when they are like defending their territory against other males to look bigger or mm -hmm. to attract females. This is just kind of how they puff themselves, puff them like a peacock, you know? Okay, yeah. So it's the same idea. Uh, they have this dewlap and they'll show it off to other males and females. So this is just a brown anole, but not just any brown oh, anole. What? Brown anoles are usually what people use as feeders, but this is a lime bread, wow. red brown anole, chili red, as the guy who produced these calls them. And obviously his dewlap's red. This is what a normal brown anole dewlap looks like, but their body is brown. This guy is just bright red and he's fired down. Dude, it looks a little Diablo. Oh my gosh. I mean, most anoles aren't friendly. They're more like a, you know, tropical fish where you're just watching them in an enclosure you built mm -hmm. for them. But they're super fun to watch. Yeah, like more like display animals. Yeah. Look at these colors, though. 
Yeah, the colors and the variation and the behavior is just all worth it to me. I've never seen a red one. Is this new or? Uh, there's wild red ones, mm -hmm. not nearly like this. This okay. is a few. This is like probably five years of breeding, and uh, and those are cool because by the time they hatch to when they can lay an egg and that next egg hatches, uh, all happens within about a year. So you can go through generations pretty quickly and make something like that. So that's what I'm doing with all my roquette. I'm holding back the majority of the babies because um, a lot of them aren't in the U.S. or very few are. So I'm line breeding some different localities and looks to make some just enhanced versions of what they already are, which they're already amazing, but just human intervention to make them a little cooler, just like any line breeding or morph. So we'll see how it goes. So this is a female blue booty. It's a subspecies of the Cuban nitinol. She's not totally fired up. She's not very nice. Uh, Anolis equestris podior. And when she's totally fired up, she's firing up now. That blue on her head is just insane. It'll go down her body into the bright green and the yellows in her stripes. Now, females have the stripes. Uh, males don't. Males will have more of the dots. And uh, she's not fully grown. She can still grow an inch or two more and bulk up a lot more. She's yet to lay eggs for me. She's still less than a year old, so... We will see if she does. And she's actually being pretty chill right now. I didn't restrain her at all getting out of the cage. Edwin saw she kind of hopped out, mm -hmm. but got her out of my hand, and now she's doing good. They can fire down and up really quick. I don't know if you can see from when I, we start filming, but she can literally turn completely brown. So this is the male Blue Beauty, and you can see he doesn't have the stripes, same as the stripes as the female. He's not happy. But you can see how bright he is. He still has a lot of blue to come in. He's Like I said, he's less than a year old. He's still beautiful. And, man, big lizard. Yeah, like Almost, that. what, two feet close. Mm -hmm. All right, man, so what do we have here? This is an albino green and all. He hatched out here over a week, maybe two weeks ago now. I've been feeding him a lot of Pangea. Uh, he seems to be doing good on that. He hasn't gone too skinny. So he's he's doing well he doesn't like light he definitely is sensitive to it that's why his eyes are closed mm -hmm. but when his eyes are open i don't know if you'll be able to see but he does have red eyes it's so hard to see yeah he's still tiny the camera's having I a hard know. time focusing. hopefully he does good and grows up and i can show off his red eyes because a lot of people don't believe me that he he's an albino eyes. but i i promise he has red eyes because yeah, i know that. a lot of people would enjoy these as pets uh -huh. they're obviously much more mellow because like green iguanas when they're albino they can't see as well mm -hmm. just imagine a terrarium with the red ones and the uh yellow ones and then some green ones Jeez. that would be cool can you do just, that do they fight yeah anything? no females don't fight you could have one male probably uh but the females get along so so these are cuban false chameleons even though they're called a chameleon they are a type of anole anolis barbatus and this is a girl and even the girls have cool dewlaps let's see she show it off Anyway, kind of white with the black. And this is a baby up here. They make absolutely awesome pets, as you can tell. They just kind of hang out. Yeah. Now this is normal behavior for them. They will hang out, they'll tongue feed, they'll just kind of wait for you to feed them. They make super, there she is showing that off to us. <sighs> Dude, look at super that. Super cool. And uh, they just make super good pets. I think better than a bearded dragon because they just kind of, you can see this baby just wants to hang yeah, out. they're just it chilling, dude. has no desire dude. to go anywhere. Same with the girl, they just kind of hang out. They're slow too, right? Yeah, they're slow, but they also have no fear of people, really. Mm -hmm. They won't run away when you open the cage, they won't do anything. These are the best pet knoll if you have kids and they want to hold them or something. All the other knolls are more of kind of display animals. These are definitely, even though these are amazing displays, like insane looking, they, uh, they're great as a handling pet as well. There you go, parents, get these for your kids. Cuban false companions. <laughs> This is Anola's small wood eye, the small woods Anola, and he's just fired up like crazy since being out. Uh, obviously that aqua color is awesome. He's in the same kind of um, complex as the Cuban Knights, so he isn't an equestress, he's a Anola's small wood eye, but he's in the same family, and look at that. Jeez. Insane dewlap. And he's pretty mellow, they can be pretty mellow. Um, now most Anolas can be mellow if you work with them. They're pretty smart, honestly. Uh, smarter than a bearded dragon or leopard gecko in my opinion. Not as smart as a monitor, but they can definitely recognize you, know when you're going to feed them, 
you know, know if you're gonna be nice to them or not. He's only maybe 75% fired up right now. And when he's totally fired up, it's just like kind of blinding how bright blue he is. Yeah, definitely a huge comparison from when we first pulled him out to now. Yeah. He's so, well, to me, he looks fired up already, but. Yeah. No. Can't imagine when he's a fully fired up. They're, so, moving away from anoles, these are called bush anoles, Peruvian bush anoles, but they're in the Polycurus genus. So, they're not technically an anolus species, but they are called an anole, and they're really amazing. They're kind of the guana anole combination. Polycurus peruvianus. And I think these are really the only second, the second ones in the U.S. Or a group. I have a trio of them. No kidding, man. And yeah, that's the male. The females look totally different. Um, I can pull out a female. And they're what's really cool, they're called, also called a monkey and all. Because they kind of just hang from the tail. <laughs> like that. That's so cool, man. And how big do they grow? This is a full-grown male. That's Even the females have a dewlap, you can see there. Yeah, I already pulled out. And uh, the males have one just like that. Super, super wow, cool. Wow, man. I'm so happy I have Look them. at those tails, too. Yeah. See, Jeez, kind of look how... Showing off to each other. <laughs> Little monkey. Yeah. Very cool lizards. Now, the females and males are usually housed separately, but I have enough room that they seem to be getting along and not fighting. But you can see when I put them up against each other, they do kind of face off. So. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Special thanks to Herb Time for letting us come and check out his amazing collection here. It's always Herb Time. And you're on YouTube now, right? I am. Guys. I mean, I've been on YouTube forever, but I just started uploading again, kind of, sort of, so. Guys, go spam him. Tell him Please. I sent you. And let's get this guy to... 1K. One... <laughs> you're not at 1K yet? <laughs> guys, 700. go get this guy to 1K, guys. Come, come on. on guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.